Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is your first time dropping into the channel, welcome. I just want to give you a little bit of an update. I'm getting ready, uh, set up tonight. I'm going to spend some time in uh, NGC 2024, the Flame Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, Nebula area. I've got a clear sky tonight. And uh, what I'm working on is I've already integrated two nights worth of data, and now I'm going to try and capture some good data tonight and then I'll integrate that in and then maybe another night and I want to see if I continue to integrate in more exposure time if I will achieve uh, some finer detail in the uh, in the uh, flame head uh, in the flame nebula and horse head nebula region and again I'm using uh, my Canon 6D full frame sensor but I wanted to give you an update I just received my um, ZWO ASI 294 mm monochrome camera so I want to give you an update I'm moving in this direction I knew from the beginning that due to the light pollution in my area I would need to move to a narrow band uh, and uh, LRGB to try to uh, tamp down some of the light pollution in my area so I pulled the uh, trigger and uh, the camera arrived today it's probably going to take me a couple of weeks to get it up and running but I just wanted you to know that you'll start to see some content around a dedicated astronomy camera uh, a monochrome one uh, using uh, narrow band filters to start with uh, I only had enough money to get the uh, H alpha filter I'm selling stuff on Craigslist to try to get uh, some money for some other things selling stuff I haven't been using some cases for years uh, and that's how I'm funding uh, uh, my uh, astrophotography uh, uh, activity right now uh, the other thing I got is I got an eight position uh, ZWO electronic filter wheel so um, I figure it's going to take me a week or two to get this all together to figure out how to get it into the imaging train uh, how to start to set gain properly and things that you have to deal with with a uh, dedicated monochrome camera and again this is a cooled camera so that uh, provides some benefits when it comes to building uh, a library of uh, calibration frames and that type of stuff so these are some of the topics I'll start to cover I still plan to use my uh, Canon 6D DLS DSLR from time to time um, and that way I can do some uh, comparisons uh, between the images that I'm able to uh, produce uh, using the two different, uh, two different cameras. So um, that's about it, just a short update, uh, but I wanted to uh, let you know what direction we're headed in here. We're headed to narrowband. And it's interesting because I was doing pretty good with my Canon 6D. And now I uh, feel that I've put another challenge on myself um, that maybe I should have delayed that challenge a little bit. But again, you know, it's a challenge. Uh, I'll focus on it. I'll become successful over time and I'll have some fun doing it and I'll share that information uh, with you. And then the other thing I'm gonna do tonight, uh, last night I took some uh, video of uh, setting up dithering in PhD2 so that video is up here somewhere uh, I'll put a link to it uh, tonight what I'm going to try uh, to uh, attempt successfully is what's called a automated meridian flip uh, as you may know as you get close to the meridian at 180 degrees uh, you essentially need to uh, rotate the mount around to the other side uh, and then uh, continue on imaging uh, and that's due to sometimes your optical trains real long and it can hit into the leg post uh, of your uh, of your tripod so tonight astrophotography tool I'm gonna attempt my first automated uh, meridian flip and I'll let you know how it goes I may capture some of the uh, some footage around setting up the uh, parameters in astrophotography tool uh, maybe that would be helpful helpful to you if you haven't done that and the other thing when the flip is happening I will be out here watching 
because you, you, as you can see, one of the things that I'm dealing with now is all these cables, and uh, you need to make sure uh, that they're loose enough where they're not going to constrict or cause you any problems. Uh, you people that go with ASR, ASI Air Pro, I imagine you're not dealing with uh, cable issues like that. A few of you viewers have mentioned that product to me. Uh, maybe down the road I'll take a look at it. So uh, That's about it. You know the drill. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, I welcome new subscribers. And what really helps the channel and what's really helping me learn, going up my learning curve, are comments from viewers and uh, I find those end questions. I find those very helpful. So please uh, take some time uh, to comment and share what you're doing uh, in your astrophotography deep sky object imaging journey. Okay, till next time. Bye.